Welcome to Medlacto. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic that is attachments and the articulations of the metacarpal bones. So first of all we will discuss the different muscles attachment to the metacarpal and after that we will discuss the articulations of the metacarpal with the different bones. So actually we discuss the both aspects of the metacarpal, dorsal aspects and the palmar aspects. So if you see here at the uh, this side you will see the palmar aspect this is actually the palmar aspect and here is the dorsal aspect the palm side is actually called the palmar aspect and the opposite will be the dorsal okay so first of all if we discuss the palmar side or you can say anterior side of the metacarpal so if you see here at the thumb here is basically the thumb so just keep one thing in your mind at the thumb side you will see that side is actually the lateral thumb side will be the lateral side and the opposite will be the medial side lateral side and the medial side okay now first of all if we discuss the first metacarpal here are basically the total five metacarpals so we are going to discuss first metacarpal and that is here okay so as we know that we divide the metacarpal into three regions head region shaft region and the base region so in the first metacarpal at the shaft region that is actually the central region in this case you will see the attachment of the most important muscle and that muscle is the opponent's opponent's pollicis muscle okay whenever you see the word pollicis it means that it will be related to the thumb pollicis mean thumb okay so that's why at the shaft region of the first metacarpal you will see the attachment of the opponent's pollicis muscle at what side at the lateral side anterior lateral side some part will lie in the anterior side and some part will lie in the lateral side so that's why we call anterior lateral side so this muscle is actually present at the anterior lateral side okay that's very much important okay at the base here is basically the lower portion is actually the base of the metacarpal again in the base you will see the lateral and the medial so if you see at first corner lie in the lateral and the second corner lie in the medial okay or you can also say that this is lateral you can say radial side and the medial side you can say the ulnar side why because if you see that at the thumb side you will see the presence of the radius bone so that component that is actually present at the lateral we can say that the radial aspects or radial side and the opposite will be the ulna or you can say ulnar side so lateral side or you can say radial side medial side or you can say ulnar side so at the lateral side base of the lateral side you will see the presence of the muscle and that is the abductor pollicis longus muscle so that muscle is very much abductor pollicis longus muscle actually present at the base of the first metacarp and at the medial side you will see the most important muscle and that muscle is actually the first interosseous muscle okay just just keep one thing in your mind so major muscle is actually the interosseous osseous muscle all metacarpals have interosseous muscle except the third metacarpal so there is an exception that the third metacarpal don't have any interosseous muscle otherwise all metacarpals have interosseous muscle at the palmar aspects so that's very much important so that is actually the first interosseous 
muscle okay next is the second metacarpal okay in the second you will see the shaft region at the base there in the shaft region you will see the presence of the second interosseous muscle which we have just discussed that is the second interosseous muscle okay but at the base region you will see the presence of the two muscle first is the flexor carpi radialis so at the base you will see the two muscle here is the black area is actually this muscle is actually called the flexor carpi radialis muscle so that's very much important okay and after that you will see the attachment of another muscle and that muscle is actually called the adductor pollicis muscle but you see the what aspect actually adductor pollicis has two aspects oblique and the transverse so what aspects oblique aspects of the adductor pollicis lie in this region so i write it oblique so that is the oblique aspects of the adductor pollicis will attach at the second metacarpal of the base so that is the adductor pollicis so next is the third again in the third region third metacarpal you will never see the any attachment of the interosseous muscle which we have discussed that this is an exception case okay but at the base level you see one aspects of the adductor pollicis lie at the second metacarpal and one lie in the third so it's mean that the adductor pollicis brevis has also the oblique and at the third so here are basically the two attachment of the adductor pollicis one is for the second and one is for the third okay but there is an other transverse adductor pollicis that actually lie here this one this is actually called the transverse aspects of the adductor pollicis muscles okay so just keep two things in the third metacarpal first is the oblique adductor pollicis muscle and second is the transverse adductor pollicis muscle so the here are basically the two muscle and at the fourth region you will see the presence of the fourth interosseous muscle again that's very much important fourth interosseous muscle okay and in the last one that is actually the little finger in the little finger you will see most important things first at the shaft region and at the base region at the shaft region you will see the two most important muscle okay first one at the shaft region you will see the most important is the opponents digiti minimi digiti means finger little finger minimi means small opponents opponents digiti minimi muscle will attach at, to the shaft region of the fifth metacarpal and in the again in the shaft region you will also see the presence of the fifth interosseous muscle so interosseous muscle very much important and they will present in all except the third metacarpal just give one exception in your mind and at the base here is the base at the base region you will see also the attachment of another muscle and that is called the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle so that's again very much important that is the extensor carpi ulnaris muscle also attached to the fifth side so here are basically the different attachment to the palmar aspects of the metacarpal okay if we discuss the dorsal aspects or you can say posterior aspects of the uh, metacarpal again you see thumb side will be the lateral side opposite will be the medial side okay that's very much important okay the major muscle that is actually present and the dorsal aspects is again is actually the dorsal inter osseous muscle inter osseous muscle just like the palmar interosseous muscle here are basically the dorsal inter but there is a, a very interesting thing 
in dorsal later osseous muscle will always lie between the metacarpal bones here if i say that here are basically the two metacarpal bones so muscle will lie between the two metacarpal they will not lie at the side or the periphery of the metacarpal so if you see here metacarpal will, uh, interosseous muscle will be present at the as first and the second second and the third third and the fourth and fourth and the fifth they will lie between the metacarpal they will not lie at the periphery of the metacarpal in the first and the fifth case that's very much important okay if you see at the first metacarpal you will see the very much important muscle and that is the first interosseous muscle here is the greenish area is actually the attachment of the first interosseous muscle okay in the second case you will see at the base that's very much important at the base you will see the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle that is the side you will see at the base of the second metacarpal you will see the extensor carpi radialis longus muscle extensor carpi radialis longus muscle will lie or will attach to the base of the second metacarpal okay and again you see here are basically the two red area and the black area so these are basically the attachment of the interosseous muscle so again you see the presence of the interosseous muscle that's very much important okay and after that in the third again in the base of the third you will see again the attachment of the very much important muscle and that is the extensor carpi radialis brevis brevis mean small so that's very much important so if you have a strong concept then you can easily understand or remember the name of the muscle extensor carpi radialis so the word radialis help you in remembering the name of the muscle why because these are basically uh, present at the thumb side or near to the thumb and at the thumb side you will see the presence of the radius so we gave the name to the muscle that is actually present to the radius is called the radius muscle so that is extensor carpi it means they will also uh, attach to the carpus radialis brevis muscle so that is very much important okay again in this region you will see the blue and the black region that is actually present in the shaft region so that is actually the interosseous muscle third interosseous muscle by the name of the metacarpal okay and at the fourth side you again see the attachment of the muscle most important that is the interosseous muscle other muscles uh, not attached just interosseous muscle and the last is very much important at the fifth fifth side you again see the attachment of the interosseous muscle so interosseous muscle present in all these cases but present at the or between the metacarpal but at the opposite palmar spec there is an exception that is the third metacarpal doesn't have any interosseous muscle okay if we discuss the different articulations of the metacarpal metacarpal attached to the different bone so first metacarpal will attach to the trapezium you will remember it with the t because here here is the first metacarpal so beneath you will see the trapezium and the trapezium will form the joint with the first metacarpal that is actually the first articulation second case you will see trapezium trapezoid capitate plus third that's very much important so in the second case you will see the trapezium next is the trapezoid trapezium trapezoid next is third one is the capitate trapezium trapezoid capitate and the third all these form the joint with or articulation with the second metacarpal because they are just near to the second metacarpal trapezium trapezoid capitate and the uh, third metacarpal they are just near to the second so that they form the articulation and next is the capitate capitate and the second and the fourth metacarpal form the joint so here is basically the third metacarpal just make clear your concept that the third metacarpal is near to the capitate it will form the articulation and the fourth and the second metacarpal is also between 
Third, metacarpalines lie between the fourth and the second, so they also form the articulation with these metacarpa. Okay. Next is the capitate, hemate, and the three and the five. So again, you see at the fourth side, you will see here is last one is hemate. Capitate, hemate form the joint, and the third and the fifth, they are fourth will lie between the fifth and the third. So that's also from the articulation. And last is the head and the fourth. Why? Because hemet is just beneath the fifth metacarpal. Okay. And beneath, beside the fifth metacarpal, you will see the fourth metacarpal. So hemet and the fourth metacarpal form articulation with the fifth one. So these are basically the different attachment of the metacarpal. If you still have any question, you may ask in the comment section. Thank you so much.